Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gamer here, and today I have a fun one for you. We are going to do a Genshin Impact TCG PvP gameplay analysis, and I have a really, really fun com that I I fought against this guy. Uh, shout out to you, whoever you are. It was a really good fight, and I think there's a lot of takeaways from this com that I want to share. And this is an example of a team that's getting quite popular in the meta lately, where it's a heal sustain com where they run with double healers to prevent any AoE damage from breaking through to damage their characters. So here I'm running a Yoimiya, Kea, and Fischl comp. I like this comp because it does good AoE damage in terms of uh, super conduct, as well as also very good burst damage in terms of melt as well as uh, overloaded damage. With a bit of control here and there, and very good rotational uh, skills, as all three of them have some kind of off-field uh, ability in their kit as well. So I decided to start off with Fischl in order to get some uh, electro application on the enemies, but unfortunately my starting elemental die hand didn't support the idea. I had like 4 cryo and 3 pyro, which means that it technically is more efficient for me to go with my other two characters. So I had to adjust this my strategy and I decided, okay, I'm going to go with Kaya first to prop in a little bit of cryo and then get some melt done instead of focusing on overload. And one of the reasons why overload is usually my preferred choice is because overload forces the opponents to switch characters after the elemental reaction occurs. This kind of throws in a wrench to the enemy's plans and it really adds in a layer of advantage for myself because they not only have to spend energy but it also uh, takes up a battle turn so I will get the first action straight away if they don't use the character, the active character that they have after the overload. So that's just some kind of things I'm thinking about. So here I just chip in very quickly a cryo damage. Diona already started her shielding to prevent some damage going through. And my thoughts is I'm going to end off the round with a bit of melt damage as soon as I can. So that I'm able to dish off a little bit more damage to quickly burst down one of the healer units. <laughs> so that I'm playing. able to get a slight advantage. Because two double healer units and especially with shielding and sustain is very difficult to burst down. Uh, and I want to do it as soon as I can. So pretty decent first round. We still have uh, three cards in our hand. We also are playing a Timmy's Bird and we have already Diona at 4 HP. So let's see how the second round goes right now. More often than not, the dice that you roll actually determines quite a lot of what you're going to do. Ideally, I would like some Pyro and Cryo now because we are going for a Melt Comp, but the game wants to, to throw me a curveball and decides to give me a little bit more Electro to incentivize perhaps a play on Fischl. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go for an Overloaded Reaction now to get rid of one of the units. And Catherine is actually a really good counter to this overloaded strategy because Catherine allows switching characters to be a fast action which means that overload no longer uh, consumes the action turn of the enemy and all it does is you consume one energy and you are able to immediately act after you switch. Which means now overloader isn't as attractive for me as anymore because the enemy can just switch back by spending just one energy and immediately act when they hit the first turn. So I'm thinking of just continuing as much burst as I can to focus down on the Diona. And here I'm just looking at my options right now. As you can see, the enemy decides to heal up their Diona and already preparing for more equipment being thrown in with Wagner later on. And at 5 HP, it doesn't really seem like possible for me to burst down uh, Diona with my Fischl right now. So I'm just looking at my options and seeing how am I going to play to dish out the most amount of damage possible. Because Diona's burst is almost going to be up. She already has two charges on her elemental energy uh, recharge gauge. And I decided to just play for the next game. So I draw more cards to see whether it changes my plans. And interestingly, I got a double Paimon pool which gives me more energy and is exactly what I needed to go into the middle to late game. So I get more burst energy cost to double down in the later end. And I decide to use my remaining energy and feed it to uh, Lieben right over there. Once you get 3, you actually get more resources for the later uh, parts. It's an example of what we talked about in our previous Novice Guide video, where you are doing a resource management and in order to counter these kind of heal teams, you want to double down and focus all of your damage in one particular round. And I'll be demonstrating that in a little bit. So here is an example, I have 11 energy for this turn which is very good amounts of possibly burst damage that I can do. I can even chip in maybe 3 attacks or so, which would be usually enough to take down most units. 
but the opponent is very smart, he's reading the the match carefully and just throwing a lot of sustain into Diona to just make it very difficult to break down Diona. At the same time, she's also doing chip damage on my units because I don't have any sustain units running on my team and I'm relying solely on getting rid of the enemies as soon as I can. So running with this double Paimon strat, I'm focusing more in the next game. I don't mind if I can't burst anyone in this round because I don't think I'll be able to do it with the lack of reaction damage and just focusing on pure elemental uh, damage. And I don't want to switch around too much uh, in this particular instance. So I sacrificed Yonia in this aspect. I knew she was going to die from melt, but she already activated her burst, which is going to give quite a lot of uh, pyro, off-field pyro application to deal a lot of melt damage as you will see right here. So I know I'm going to do a lot of reaction damage, I decided to use an instructor's cap to give me a bit of refund on the energy. So launching a melt with Kea and Yoimiya's burst gives more pyro application to allow me to keep repeating this strategy and hopefully if I can get Kea's burst out the next turn it'll be even more uh, off-field melt damage as well and I can switch to Fischl to do more or tank a bit of damage as well. And if you look at the game state right now, it does seem that I'm in a losing advantage because the opponent has 10, 7, and 3 HP, whereas I only have 2 units left with uh, barely full HP. So as you can see, thankfully I got pretty good rolls to begin with and also 4 additional uh, Omni energy from the double Paimon, giving me a 12 uh, energy to boot. If you are my opponent, you should take note of this that the opponent is planning to snowball everything into one uh, match and burst all at one go. And that is my plan as well. I need to take down someone as soon as I can. Ideally, if I can get rid of both Diona and Banner at the same time, will be great. But I don't think so because of the they both have their burst up soon and he immediately does a shielding for Banner to protect him and immediately does a very painful melt damage onto Kea. And it does look like Kea might go down. So I put a bit of sustain to help him uh, maybe pull through a little while longer as well. This moment will be frozen in time. So I decide to activate Kea's burst to get that off-field application and I know that the bandit won't die because of his shielding that the that the opponent just did. So the player made a good move. He immediately switched to Diana who has his, her burst ready to activate a bit of healing and sustain for the rest of the team as well. While also putting my Kea at the risk of dying. So forcing me to also make a decision. Do I want to sacrifice Kea and go 1v3? Or do I want to or do I want to switch and sacrifice some energy? So here I decided to go for the very quick melt damage. I wanted to burst one as soon as I can, seeing that Banner is only at 2 HP. I might have enough energy to chip down the Diana in this turn, and possibly even rotate to Fischl to tank a bit more damage in the subsequent round. So I switch up to Fischl, I want to keep my Kea alive as long as I can, because switching is the only way to make use of Kea's uh, elemental burst. And we managed to take down the Diana, and for the first time, Kea, uh, uh, Kerching is being seen in play right now. So here I decided to just use my two remaining energy to get more cards hopefully so that I can uh, be able to use more resources in the next match, in the next round. So overload switching doesn't really affect him that much other than the use of one energy because of Catherine. He's able to just switch and immediately still go first. So it's going to be a really close match. And I'm hoping for good rolls on the dice. And thankfully I got actually quite lucky with my rolls here with uh, 4 Electro which is exactly what I needed uh, given that Fischl is going to be doing the remainder of the damage. So as you can see, he swapped from Kerching to Banner and still able to take a turn thanks to Catherine's uh, fast action and he makes quite a lot of difference in these kind of small uh, nitty gritty things. And he's going to immediately pop his burst to get a bit of sustain and damage going as well. To now also put... Uh, to now also put Fischl at the risk of dying with only 5 HP, forcing me to make a decision as well. This is a very close match, and I decide to apply some Electro Damage off here. 
and recharge my OS in terms of the counter and I'll show you why I did this in a little bit. Noting that of course if the turn ends he's gonna get very good healing from Diona's uh, ultimate as well as he also has Bennett's Q available to heal him even more. So he switches to Kerching right now to tank a bit of damage to keep his banner alive and here's Here's what I did in order to combat uh, this strategy to do as much as I can. I was thinking really hard about what I can do to make use of every single resource that I have to give myself the edge. Here I run a Travelling Doctors uh, or, or Lucky Dog in order to get a bit of sustain when I use my E to help me tide through perhaps one overload uh, reaction damage. So the problem with going long into the match is your opponent always acts first as, as you can see so far from all the rounds that we've had in this match I've never gone first once and that actually makes quite a big difference especially if you want to get the first mover the advantage to quickly uh, eliminate someone. And here I do a clever strategy here by just switching my characters from Kea to Fisher to Kea again to get that off field uh, super conduct uh, reaction damage to take out the Kerching. And unfortunately, the healing goes first, so he's able to survive my Oz attack with 2 HP remaining. And very easily, he could do some good melt damage to burst down one of my units very quickly. And he could have more sustain in his hand, so this uh, match is really going down to the wire. And thankfully, he didn't have any other cards to sustain him uh, any longer. For example, if one more healing card that he had, he would have uh, gotten the advantage and killed both of my units. And do leave a like and subscribe if you found this kind of content helpful. I'm trying to do something a bit more different. Do let me know if this kind of gameplay reviews are interesting or you guys want to see more of it. And I'll definitely do more in future. Uh, do check out this Novitz guide which I left right here to get you guys up to speed so you can also be performing at your best in Genshin Impact trading card game. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.